The FS module from Deno allows us to manipulate our file system in our Deno application. So this is things like creating folders, updating files and modifying them. And we're going to jump in and take a look at it. The first thing I want to do is import some of the standard packages from the online URL. And the online URL for FS is just Deno LAN forward slash standard forward slash FS forward slash mod.ts. The first thing that I want to do is create a directory and to do this, we've got a couple of options, but I'm going to use a function or method called ensure DIR. And what this will do is check whether a directory exists. And if it doesn't, it'll create it sort of like the command make DIR. What we're going to pass in now is ensure DIR with the name of our folder. So in this case, I want the folder to be called bar. We're going to run this and to run it, we're going to pass in deno run. And we're going to add the unstable flag. We're also going to allow dash write and allow dash read. And these two flags will ensure that we can read and write to our application. And finally, we'll pass in the file name, which is just called example.js. Let's hit enter on that. And we can see that our first folder has been created. Now there's another command that we can utilize. And this one over here is called empty DIR. Now empty DIR works a little bit different simply because with this one, it'll actually remove or empty the file if it does exist and create a brand new one. So it's almost like deleting it and recreating it. So you have to be careful when you're using this command, but we're going to use it over here. We're going to call empty DIR and we're going to pass in another variable here, maybe foo and in this case we're going to save that and we're going to rerun our application when we do we can see that the folder here called foo has been created let's put in a test file in here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to rerun our application we can see that as soon as we do that file has been removed so that's one of the things you have to be careful about when using mtdir with these two folders now created, I want to run another command in here and it's called exists. And this is a pretty simple one, but what it does is it checks if a folder actually exists in a certain location and it can return a promise or even a Boolean. And what I want to do in this case is I just want to run it here and we're going to check if the folder foo exists. Now we already know it does, but we're going to set it against a variable. So we're going to check if exists equals await exists foo. And we're going to console.log it. And ideally this should come up as true. So we're going to save that and rerun our demo application. And you can see that it has come back as true. We can comment out this empty directory for foo and delete it now. And what we can test out is whether this directory still exists when we rerun the application. And we can see now it's come back as false. We can also pass in a file in here, such as example.js. And if we do, we can see that the file does exist, but if we were to misspell it, then it would come back that this file doesn't. So this is a few examples of how we can use the exist method in our application. Now let's see if we can create another method here called move. And this one is pretty self-explanatory, but what we'll be doing is moving one folder from one file name to another. And what we're going to do to be able to achieve this is simply pass in the file name or folder that we want to move. So in this case, maybe the bar one, and we're going to assign it a new name, such as maybe new bar. We're going to run this command and we're going to give it a test. So we're going to just run our console here and we should be able to see the two folders for bar and foo to appear, but then bar will automatically be renamed to new bar. When we run Deno, we can see that the foo and the new bar have been created. So that's really cool. But if we were to rerun this once more, we would come up with a flag because there's already a new bar folder and we can't overwrite that. So let's have a look at how we can fix that up. The first thing I want to be able to do is run a wait on all of these so that they happen in order. Otherwise, they might happen out of order. We might have some problems. And 
when we run our application, it specifically tells us that the folder already exists. So in order to get rid of this error, what we're going to do is pass in another object here. And this object will be overwrite and we're going to pass in the boolean true. We're going to save that and we're going to rerun our application. When we do, we can see now we're overwriting the new bar folder with the new content. So say if we had some content in there and we reran the application, that would be deleted. So you have to be careful about that. What I'm going to do is create a new test JSON in here. And this test JSON will just say uh, maybe something simple like hello and that can equal world. And we're gonna save that. And we're gonna try and read that in our Dano application. Now, to be able to read a JSON, we've got a method here called read JSON. We're gonna pass that in and we're gonna save that against a variable. So let's save maybe our test as equaling await read JSON. And in here, we'll pass in the file folder path. And in this case, it's just test.json. We're going to give that a test and console log that out. We're going to log it out here as to test. We're going to save that and run our demo application. When we do, we can see that we've console logged out hello world, which is really cool. We'll also be able to do this with our write command too. So if we wanted to write a JSON to file, we can give that a test too. Let's pass in a new one called write JSON. And this method here, we're going to give it a shot and see if that works too. What I wanted to do is write a new JSON to file by passing in the command here and passing in a file name. And the file name can be, say, example.json this time. We're going to pass in our object, and this object can be anything, but I'm going to just say Adrian is true. And finally, we'll maybe set in some properties. So in this case, some properties might include something like uh, spaces to two. We're going to save that and we're going to rerun our application here. And when we do, we can see our example.json has been created and that's looking really good. The spaces command is important because it adds indentation and white space for us. But if we were to remove this, for example, and just save it as is, then what would happen is that we're getting a much more compressed version of our JSON there. What I want to be able to do now is actually traverse some files and folders and we're going to use a method here called walk. This will traverse all those. So we're going to give that a test. Let's console log out all the file names in our contract directory. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a for a loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass in for await and in here I'm going to do const entry of walk. And this will just be the root folder that we're currently accessing. And in here, we're going to console log out the entry.path. Let's save that and rerun our demo application and see what we get. In here, we can see that we get a list of all our folders and files. And that gives us an example of how we can utilize this. We can even just have a look at the JSON objects we get in return. And here we get file name, we get path, we get whether it's a file, a directory, and a couple of other bits of information. But this is a really useful command if you want to get more information about the directory you're currently in. The final thing we're going to do is just create a basic text file here with some basic information. And what I want to do this time is actually have a little bit of a read and write here straight to our file. To be able to read this file as plain text, we're going to import another method here. And this will be just called read file str. And this is just going to read the string of the file. So let's give this one a shot. I'm just going to comment this out and we're going to use this up here. We're going to read the file. And in this case, the file is just basic.txt. What I want to do is just pass in the encoding. So the encoding in this case will just be UTF-8. So I'm just going to pass that in here. And what we're going to do is maybe we're going to save that to a console. So let's save this maybe as a variable such as readme and we'll console log this out. I'm going to pass this in and we're going to run our deno system again. So let's run deno and we can see that when we run this, we get back a promise. So we'll just set a wait for this and run it one more time. And here we get out the information here for basic information. So that looks like it's all working.
We can also use this command to write to file. So let's pass in a similar method, but in this case, this method is called write file string. And what we're gonna do is write some basic information to another file. And let's grab this current string that we have in here and replace it with write file string. In this case, we're gonna write in here more.txt and we're going to pass in some file content. So for the content in here, I'm gonna pass in more content. We're going to save that and we're going to run our application once more. And when we do, we can see that the more.txt file was created and in here we have more content. So looks like that's all working and that's pretty cool. This was just a quick introduction to the FS module on Deno, but I hope you guys liked it. My name's Adrian and I do videos around design and development. So if you haven't already, hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.